Good evening, everyone. Um, I really hope this video finds you safe and well. Um, the reason for this upload, well, there's two or three different reasons why I'm live tonight, and it's not scheduled, so I do apologise if you're watching this after the event and you didn't know about it. If this is a, another successful live stream, I will announce a proper schedule and date and time of when I will be doing these. The reason for this particular stream is... Everybody's doing it at the moment, but mainly people are doing it on Facebook. And I completely understand through knowing a lot of you for quite a few years now, thankfully because you follow my channel, that a lot of you aren't on social media. You're not on Facebook, you're not on Twitter, you're not on Instagram and all that sort of thing. So you're out of the loop and you don't see a lot of the, the content that gets uploaded to Facebook and to those platforms and that's why I've always loved uploading right here on YouTube for you, because this kind of bridges the gap. It, you know, it's a bridge between the two. Um, and it's because I know a lot of you miss out on a lot of information, match results, news, um, and a lot of features as well, because a lot of features and videos are only uploaded to social media platforms. So that's why I'm doing this video right here, right now. And I'm also doing it because this will remain here once this live stream is finished. This video will remain right here on this channel, so it just helps to grow my channel and it means that people can watch it as a catch-up, whereas when you do them on Facebook, they kind of get lost and never seen again, apart from that initial period. So that's the reason why I'm doing, doing this feed like this and not on Facebook or any other social media platforms. The other reason I'm doing it is because the vast majority of the world, certainly everybody who's been in touch with me, are in some sort of isolation. And I've had a couple of messages again today from people who it's, you know, it's easy to forget there are lots of different people out there in different situations. You know, I'm very fortunate that, you know, I have still got a job. I obviously do a lot of media stuff here. I am pretty well connected in the angling community as well as regards just keeping in touch through WhatsApp and all that sort of thing and on the social media platforms. And I've got my own vehicle and I can just go out and go fishing when I want. And you know, it's easy to forget that there are people who aren't in that position. And now, sadly, just obviously through what's happening in the world right now, a lot of people's outlet and their only outlet from isolation in a normal world is going fishing. And they've had that taken off them as well. So I thought the least I could do is do an upload to just kind of have a bit of a hangout with you. I know there's lots of people out there that aren't surrounded by family and friends. So I thought I'd log on and just say a quick hello it's driving me mad at the moment. I'm not able to get out filming for you. There's one thing I've always wanted to do is try and keep the content on here really, really nice and fresh for you. One thing that most people won't know is that a lot of the videos that I've uploaded on here, whilst a lot of the content I was really pleased with, I, I've deleted it. I've just got rid of it. And I've done that because I don't want to keep regurgitating the same sort of clips and that sort of thing. So by doing that, it kind of forces me to go and film something fresh for you. And hopefully that's shone through in, in the quality of the content. So if you're new to the channel, welcome. This is the Catch Fishing channel. It's a little bit more of a magazine, really, to be honest, a fishing magazine. There's lots of little different topics, um, topical videos in here, all in the playlists. So please feel free to, uh, to have a look at the back catalogue. There's about 280 videos now, I think. Might even be close to 300 and about three and a half million views. So there's plenty of content there for you to have a look at. Um, I've been busy today filming. I'm obviously isolating like most of you guys, and um, I've just been doing filming. You know, I'm, I'm, I've got two video channels, so they obviously need content producing for them. So, and you know, half of that content that I've been producing is for this channel right here. So if you haven't subscribed, just hit subscribe, and that way you'll not miss out on any of the future, um, future uploads. Right, I'm going to quick check in, see who's here. Hi, Matthew, Harry, Wayne, Harvey, Marvin, Nigel, Dave, Ian. I hate going through this whilst we're doing it live because I'm not kind of looking at you. I'm looking over here, but I do want to acknowledge as many comments as I can. Um, just one thing is we can do some Q&A tonight if you wish. That's entirely up to you. Just fire away if you want to um, ask any questions. I'll do my best to answer them for you in the best way I can. But it is really just about a hangout. You know, I'm just, I'm just checking in with you, hoping you're all safe and well. So let's have a quick look at what we've got here. Hi, Harry. Hope you're well, mate. Um, great to hear so many people going out feeder fishing. You know, it's, um, I just, I mean, I, I've seen a lot of changes in feeder fishing over the last 
three years or so, everybody seems to be busy. Even people who haven't got busy jobs and, a, 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 you know, a mega social life, they're always busy, always busy. And however, some people find time to prep for a lot of the float fishing competitions, um, as well as run, well, just live their life. I, I just don't know how they find time to do it. You know, I couldn't do it now. I, I just couldn't. The schedule that I've got now, I couldn't be making hundreds of pole rigs up and hook lengths and finely shotted pole rigs and making sure my elastics are right all the time. I just couldn't do it now. And so I think feeder fishing fits in with a lot of people's lives now. You know, they're very busy. And we do prep like mad for feeder competitions, certainly when you're, you're keen and eager. Um, but um, it is obviously only a fraction of what it is from when you're having to pole fish and, and all that sort of thing. So it's great to see there's so many people going out feeder fishing and enjoying it. Um, and one of the, you'll be interested to hear, I suppose, that a lot of people didn't realise that, you know, there is a little bit more to it to think about than what we used to. And I think a lot of people are finding that out now. Now they're spending more time doing it. So please keep letting me know how your fishing's getting on. Good evening. Uh, good evening, Wayne. Um, what else we got? Why are you not clapping for the NHS? Did it early. And I'll be doing it afterwards. Trust me. I have got friends that work in the NHS and I've spoken to two of them today. They're doing a fantastic job. And um, we are. it's good to see that a lot of people I know are doing their bit for them just by staying at home, staying out, out of the way, you know. Um, that's the best thing we can do in this situation. Mar, uh, Marin, if you pronounce it that way. Hi, Marin. Hello for Croatia. Love all your videos on YouTube. Thank you, Marin. Thanks for joining. Um, we've got to do it. We've got to do it. We've got to give them a clap. We'll do it. We'll do it now. Bad timing, I know, but it's the only scheduled time we could do it. If anybody is a subscriber and you're working for the NHS, just please keep up the good work. You know, if um, if any of my friends are watching, I've told them all. Any of the NHS workers, if they're struggling for anything to get all the food and all that sort of stuff around the schedule and they're not able to get, you know, go out and do that sort of thing, then you know I am at, on hand for them. Um, my sister actually works for a union, GMB union as well, and she's very much tied in with that. You know, it's um, all part of the workers' union and that sort of thing. So it's um, yeah, it's good to see. I mean, I'm seeing so many people just doing their bit you know, just by, well, doing what they're meant to be doing, basically, and not breaking rules and legislation. Evening, Jamie. Uh, what else we got here? Yeah, we are all uh, feeling a little bit uh, banged up at the moment, aren't we? <laughs> Have we got any questions on here? Good evening, everybody. Mike, Mike Pattinson. Hi, Mike. Hope you're, hope you're well, mate. Jan, hello, Jan. Hope you're all right over in the Netherlands, mate. Stephen, Shannon over in Ireland. Hi, Stephen, mate. We're missing your fishing over there. Hopefully, well, we don't even know if we're going to get there this year. My only trip there this year was going to be for the World Pairs in September. And the way things are at the moment, you know, who knows what's going to happen. But uh, hope you're safe and well, mate. The Essex Fisherman. Good evening, mate. Hi, Walshie. Hope it was good out there, mate. I know on our street they're going to be doing it again. I know they are, but I'll tell you more about that at a different stage. Mike Pattinson. Just caught me making some floats and doing a couple of pole repairs. Pole repairs, oh, that means you haven't been breaking them, mate, or is it just wear and tear? Um, but, yeah, it's not something I've done for a long time, mate, um, mess around my pole gear. Lots of people have asked me about that because I did say on this channel I was going to do more pole fishing this year. Obviously, with what's happened now, it's just kind of been put on the back burner a little bit. Um, but, you know, it is still part of it. I want to go out. I love pole fishing, and I want to get out there and do more pole fishing videos, you know as well as obviously the feeder fishing ones as well. So, well, I hope it's uh, hope your repair job's all right, Mike. I hope you're going to get a chance to go back out and use it. <laughs> Lee Smith, hi, Lee. Mark O'Neill, board, board.com. Mark, I really hope you're well, mate. I know you haven't been too uh, too good recently. I, I really hope you are all right, mate. I know you're not far from me, are you? Virtual fishing. Yeah, for those that aren't on social media, there are one or two people that have now taken to running virtual fishing matches. I'm not quite sure how they're all going to run it, but certainly one of them is just basically everybody's put, I don't know what it is, they've paid something like a £5 by PayPal into the pot, into the draw bag, and I think they're just going to draw out for first, second, third, and some section wins, something like that. And I know uh, Andy Renton, um, who runs the matches with Mick Axon at Southfield, I think they're talking about a similar sort of competition, but it's great to see everyone just kind of 
occupying themselves and things like that bring everyone together. You know, I mean, we're in a virtual world now, exactly what I'm doing right now. You know, it's, I dread to think what it would have been, what we're doing now without all this. Who knows what it would have been like. But anyway, hopefully it's not for long. Yes, Thomas Holmes, God bless the NHS workers. I completely agree, mate. Alfie Adams. Hello, Alfie. Evening, Jamie. Lots of people saying hello. Thanks, guys. Dave Pearson. Thanks, Dave. There's loads more content coming. For those that are new to the channel, um, lots of the videos that I do are actually from this tattle room. And that's the kind of riggy sort of stuff. And obviously, that's all we're allowed to do at the moment because we can't go out on the bank. So I am still producing content. The Ground Bait series has just started. The first one was about two or three days ago. And I've got one, two, three, four. I've got five more that are already filmed and edited on the hard drive, ready to upload. I'm obviously not going to upload them all at the same time, but the next one will be probably tomorrow. And that one is featuring two mixes, two brand new mixes for 2020 from Marcel van der Neind, which uh, I know is a name that a lot of you know. Um, so, and that's where I've literally got doing some tank tests in here. Just pop that light on doing some tank tests from in here so that you can see how the ground baits perform under the water and how they mix up, you know, because some of these ground baits, they're, they're not cheap. And, you know, rather than you go out and buy them and spend your hard-earned cash um, on ground baits, then when you don't know anything about them, you don't even know what they smell like, what they mix like, whether there's a lot of feed in them. I mean, one of them was a bit of a surprise. Um, the video that's been uploaded tomorrow, the Van der Neind one for the new mix, the particular mix that I use, you'll see it in the video, but it was amazing how much feed was in it. And I, I had no idea until I started mixing it. Just by looking through, it's got a nice window in the bag. In fact, I might have some here for you. There's a nice window in the bag. I'll just see if I can get it for you. And just by looking through that window, which obviously could show you, it could show you, that's the one. Feeder. And it's the sweet, the sweet carp. Really sweet mix, but that's the one that's in tomorrow tomorrow night's video. And it's amazing how much feed is in that. And just by looking through the, the, the window on the bag, you cannot tell at all how much feed's in it. So so that series is getting rolled out. And I've also, I'm starting another series as well. I've done two videos in that. And it's basically about, um, it's like a guide to venues. So, you know, I get loads of questions on social media, just like lots of people do about, um, I'm going to Boston Lakes, for example, for the first time. Can you tell me what rods or what length rods um, I should, I'll need to go, what reels, what mono, that sort of thing. I've started a series on venues like that. Boston is the first one that I've done. Um, just to give people an idea of what it's like when they get there, you know, and some footage from the venue as well so you can see what it's what it's like. So hopefully you're all going to enjoy that series when that starts getting rolled out in a few days' time. I'm going to get a couple more of the ground bait videos done, uh, well, uploaded, and then I'll start rolling those out. So hopefully you're going to enjoy those. Um, Easy fishing. Good evening, mate. What else we got here? There's so many messages on here. I can't keep track now. Yes, mad about carp fishing. Jamie, hope your dad's okay at the time. John in Blackpool. Hiya, John. Thanks for watching, mate. With a logon name like that, what sort of carp fishing is it? Is it specimen carp fishing or is it match carp? You'll have to let me know. He is. Dad is very well, very healthy and very safe. Um, yeah, he's just doing what, you know, what you have to do. You know, he's, he's been sensible. Plenty of food. Um, nice warm house. So, yeah, very, very well, but straining at the leash like like we all are. He cannot wait to get on the bank. It's ages since he's fished himself. The last few times he's been on the bank, he, he's been sat watching me catching nothing. So he can't wait to go out and do some fishing for himself. So uh, And this weather is making it worse, isn't it? Rubbing salt in the wound. Hi, Jamie. Keep up the good work. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, hello from Hull. Hello, mate. Andy Limbert. Bonnie Scotland, John Newsom. Hi, John. Hope you're all well. Are you all sick of doing uh, prep? I want to know how many people have been doing some prep because what I've been seeing on social media, everyone must have got hundreds and hundreds of hook lengths. And when we do actually get through this and we get on the bank, and if I draw next to somebody and he's tying hook lengths up on the bank, I'm really going to be saying, you know, <laughs> what were you doing? There's so many people, but, you know, just messing with the kit, you know, it's, it's the next best thing, isn't it, to... Um, the next best thing to to actually be been out on the bank but um but yeah there's like i said there's loads more content coming um like i say at the moment a lot of it is from here but i do have quite a bit of bike footage from sessions on the bank from matches that i've fished 
and um, and obviously I can create some hopefully interesting videos for you and ones that are a little bit more informative. There's lots of other videos going on to my other channel, Patreon TV, but that's more tuition style videos, rigs and that sort of thing. So, you know, I'm very, very busy. Um, for those that are interested, I do still work. Um, I have actually got a meeting with my um, employer tomorrow, which will determine how much time I'm going to be having off over the next, well, over the coming weeks. Okay, so the reason why I'm telling you that is, A, I know a lot of people will ask about my job and stuff, and, and you will be interested to know how that will impact the content on this channel. Okay, I've got some other things where I'm going to be getting one or two other anglers involved as well. Q&A type videos, ones that I can do live streams. So, you know, like I say, if you are new to the channel, just hit subscribe and you'll not miss out on any of those. Um, but there are, you know, one of the things I've always wanted to do on this channel is try and give you a little bit of, yeah, if there's a bit of entertainment there, that's good. That's an added bonus. But it's just more about a little bit of value and just sharing some of the experiences that, you know, I'm fortunate to be involved in. Um, right. So let's see. We've got some questions. Joe Nolan. Hi, Joe. Hi, Jamie. Has the 10 foot 10 slim feeder rod been discontinued if so is matrix bringing out something new fantastic question and one that's close to my heart <laughs> if you've watched any of my videos or most of them or all of them you've probably seen over the last 12 months or so how much use i've got out of the 10 foot 10 or 3.3 meter excess slim rod um it's been one of my favorite rods uh, for that sort of fishing short to medium range and I've used it for everything. A lot of people still don't believe me. I still get people walking over to me before the start of a match to have a look at the rods I've got set up because they don't actually believe that I've used that rod for just about everything for, for short to medium range fishing. And when I say anything, I've used it for roach fishing with bloodworm and joker, um, obviously on the feeder. <laughs> um, I've used it for, for fishing for proper bream on short line. I've fished it with braid. It's a great braid rod and I've used it for carp as well and, you know, across natural and commercial venues. It's a fantastic all-round rod, but to answer your question, yes, it is or it has been discontinued, okay? So if there are any out there, I've been told that there are still some, this is this is very, very current. I'm glad you've asked this now because I would have forgotten to mention this to, to you all. If there are, and I've been told that there are still some out there in circulation in the shops, I would grab them, you know, you might get a deal on them. Um, and the second part of your question, yes, of course, they're getting replaced um, with some very special rods. So um, as soon as I'm allowed to tell you all about those, then I certainly will be doing. Um, but what I will do, I'll give you a little bit of um, this is brand new um, information, never to be told. I don't know if anyone's told this to anybody on any form of social media. I've no idea. This is a hopefully it's, it's a first. I keep getting asked about hooks and that sort of thing. Yes, we have been testing some prototype hooks from Matrix. Quite a large range, different styles for different jobs. So, yes, they are on their way. Obviously, with what's been happening over in China and, and, and the global situation at the moment, they have been delayed slightly. But, yes, we have been testing a new range of hooks. So I will obviously be telling you all about those because I know some of you, it's, um, it, it, it's a massive key. You know, it's a massive thing that you're always thinking about. You're always looking for a better hook. You know, some people are absolutely obsessed with it. And it is important. Of course it is. So I will let you know about those as soon as um, as soon as I can. Okay. Right. What else have we got here? Um, I see one or two names on here that I know. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for logging on. Really hope you're safe and well. I know you're getting flooded with um, social media stuff at the minute. So I really appreciate I can see how many people have logged on. I really appreciate you logging on. Just to say hello. OK, that's what this was, this, you know, and what I need to ask you before I log off, I'm not going just yet. But what I will ask you is if you'd like me to continue these just to check in, if you have got questions to ask, that's great. Well, then let, let's do that. But I know there's people out there that are literally sat in a room on their own night after night, day after day. If you want to have a hangout, then please just comment in these uh, underneath this video or alongside this video. And I will read all the comments after this stream okay so if you do want them to continue through this period whilst i can do them i could do them nearly every night if there's enough people that want to do it and you've got some topics to discuss then let me know in the comments okay so i'll let it up leave that up to you to let me know if you want me to continue doing them because i can do these on an evening i can do my work during the day and then i can do this just for half an hour on an evening okay right who else we got stephen peters hi stephen gary adams how you doing mate van der nine pigeon 
Do you ever use it for skimmers in any ground bait mix or do most people associate it with just roach? That's a brilliant question. I'm dying to know, Gary. I hope you don't mind me asking. I'm dying to know how old you are because a lot of people that talk about that sort of thing tend to be of my sort of age group and older, mainly older, to be honest. Um, no, I mean, I have used it in the past, but I'll be absolutely honest, just like I always am with these things, is that when I did use it in the past, it certainly wasn't through any recommendation of my own or findings or anything like that. It was part of a team event. I've done it. I've only used it a couple of times and it was a team event and it was in the team plan. We all decided we were going to use it through testing. So we used it and I'll openly admit I haven't used it since. Um, I hope that answers that question. We did use it for skimmers as well, though. Um, but I think that's very much a, a specific venue type of thing. Um, I mean, there's one thing I really have spotted since for this last 16 month or whatever it is that I haven't been attached to any bait company, you know, as a sponsored angler. I'm just obviously I can use whatever I want and, and show whatever I want on here. Um, what has amazed me is how, how you can get similar results with lots of different mixers. Now, I'm not saying that that means that, that the ground bait doesn't um, make a difference because it does. You know, there are certain aspects of ground baits that will make a difference. And I know that because I found out the hard way. You know, I've been beat by anglers at the next peg and I've caught twice as many fish as them. And they've caught probably a third that I've caught, but they still ended up beating me on weight. You know, and I've seen that happen multiple times on 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 certain venues. And I've made changes and it's just transformed my fishing that way. So whilst I'm not saying there are better ground baits than others, but ground baits that do certain things like can they be overwetted? Have they got much feed in them? Are they fish meal? Are they cereal? Those qualities matter. But I think there's lots of brands out there making mixes with the same qualities that will give you the same result depending on how you use them. You know, I'm still of the, you know, I know there's a lot of people out there that think the same that. We could all sit down. You could sit 10 of the best anglers down in a row or 10 anglers in a row. And over the course of four, five matches, six matches, the top anglers will always come out on top. And you could literally do that with everybody using the same ground bait mix, um, the same rods, same tackle, everything. I know you couldn't obviously replicate that exactly, but the point I'm trying to get across is it's more about once that ground bait is of that certain quality of what you need, you know, is it fish meal? You know, is it, can you overwet it? Is it dark or or whatever those qualities are? It's then just down to application. It, it's down to how you're actually going to feed it and where and when. And, and it's all that sort of thing. And that's what sets the top lads apart. But I mean, I could talk forever about that, but that's probably a discussion for a pub sometime and a few beers. But uh, I hope that answers that, Gary. But um, but please let me know how old you are. Or you don't have to say, are you my age or older or are you younger? Because I don't hear anybody younger than me kind of talking about that sort of ingredient anymore. So my way of thinking is it's a bit of an old school thing. Um, Mike Weldon. Hello, Mike. Now then, Jamie, do you still compost your own worms? Thinking of starting one. Any tips, please, Mike? Good evening, Mike. I did a video um, about worms or starting a wormery, and it, I bet it's about two or three years ago. It really, really needs a, a revamp. It wasn't done very well. It was very, very basic. Um, but I will see if I can get around to doing a, another one. That might be something good to do now while we're in isolation. Um, tips. I learned uh, the best way of keeping worms, or most of what I knew about keeping worms, from Wayne Bartholomew. Uh, who was a Sheffielder, a lot of you will know Wayne. And, you know, one of the best things um, that, I mean, we, we never talked about specifics as regards the type of tub to keep them in, where do you keep them, all that sort of stuff. But the basics are um, keep them happy, keep them fed, okay? If you keep them, plenty of food there, soft and squidgy stuff I always found best. So stuff like bananas, nothing acidic, not no acidic, but you know, bananas, tea bags, things like that. Um, if you keep them well fed, they'll not escape or they'll not want to escape. I'm not saying they won't escape, that depends on the tub that you're using and where you keep it. But if you keep them well fed, they don't have a reason to kind of go wandering off, basically. That's the point I'm getting at. Um, don't keep them, don't let them go dry, but don't get them too wet. The other thing that I learned was the bigger the tub, this is one thing that I'd, I'd never really thought about until I did it. 
I started off with a, I think it was a 55 litre tub, um, like a clear tub, the ones that you can get from um, Staples and, and places like that. I think it was 55 litre tub. And I went to B&Q and I bought some topsoil, just a sack of topsoil. It was about a fiver or I think it was, yeah, it's just classed as topsoil. Um, and I put some wet paper in there. So I got, got some newspaper, really dampened it all down, ripped it all. So it was all shredded, put that in as well because they eat all that. And then um, just to get it going. And then I put a load of uh, bananas in there, some tea bags and just some soft um, rotting fruit, fruit or whatever it was, just to get it going. And then I went and got, I'd got about three quarters of a kilo of worm left over from a match. And I thought, I'm going to start off with those. So I just emptied them in and that was it. What I never thought about is when you buy your worms, they're in a nice little bag, aren't they? Okay, so they're in a nice little bag. And what do they do? They all ball up, don't they? So when you want the worms out of there, you just open the bag, put your hand in, and you can, once you find the ball, it's literally a ball of worm. Now, I thought they would do that in the tub, but they don't. In the tub, they act just like they do in the wild. So what happened was, I thought, I went to it the day before my match, and I thought, you know, I can go in there, I'll go and get some worms, I'll just find where the ball is, go like that, job done, in and out, two minutes, that's it, great. No, <laughs> it wasn't like that at all. Because the tub was so big, the worms had spread out. I was there about 45 minutes trying to pick three quarters of a kilo of a worm out. So that was a key lesson that I learned. Okay, so be prepared for that. So if you are going to put them in a big tub, don't expect you can pick them just like in a ball because they will go off and be individuals. And the other, well, the other advantage that I never really thought about was that when they do actually start breeding, they start breeding after about, they breed much quicker in the summer. So in the summer when it, when it's warm and the temperature's warm, obviously this matter it, sorry depends where you keep them if you keep them outside then obviously the temperature is going to be up and down according to the season so in winter they hardly eat anything because they don't move so don't put much feed in the winter and in the summer when they are moving more they eat more so you've got to feed them more but the one key advantage to it was as well once they started breeding is that i could then select dendras because they were dendra beaners that I, I, I was using i could select them from literally that size right up to fully grown and I never thought about that advantage. And it was brilliant then because if I was going somewhere where I was expecting to be fishing for bream with worms or whatever, and I was going to be, you know, going somewhere where the fish were further out, 50, 60 metres. Well, sometimes, I mean, I've seen it happen a lot that when people are fishing for bream at that range with baits like red worm, a lot of the time, certainly when the conditions are harsh and you've got a heavy feeder on, say you've got a wind straight in your face. The worms are actually coming off on the cast. And loads of times, I've seen it happen so many times, seen it in Ireland, at Southfield, they're reeling in. And every time they're reeling in, there's no bait on. And they're thinking they're getting bites or whatever. But then, you know, <laughs> come the end of the session, there's a load of there's either a load of red worms in, in the grass behind you or that robin that always seems to find you is like, you know, it's put a stone on while it's been behind you. Um, so what I could do then was, if I was going to be doing that, I could select dendras that were the same size as red worms but because they're dendras they're a lot more durable they're a lot tougher and they stay on the hook brilliant so that was an advantage that i didn't expect as well so um that that's really it just give them a reason to stay there um and if you have got some sort of a tub that can stop them escaping then that's obviously going to be a more um uh, give you more peace of mind that they're not going to go wandering off. But again, that depends where you're going to keep them. So I hope that helps you out with that, um, Mike. And uh, and if you do want to see a video on it, then let me know, comment below, and I'll see if I can get a video together for you. Uh, right, who else have we got here? Good evening, everyone. Great to see so many people logging on. Thank you for watching and supporting. Um, Jeffrey Bacon. Hi, Jeffrey. I use a 25 to 75 mix of pigeon and – all right, okay – Steve Toon, that's a name I haven't heard for a while. That's great. Thanks for that, Jeffrey. I'll let you read that. I don't want to take your time up by reading that out loud, but everyone can read that. That's an answer to the um, the question earlier about pigeon. Um, pigeon in your ground bait. Pigeon. Uh, let's just have a look. Good evening, everyone. There's so many on here. It's great to see you all logging on. Thank you. If you do want me to continue doing these, then please just comment below and let me know. Um, I'm going to log off now. I'm going to go and get in the shower, prepare my stuff for work for tomorrow for my meeting. And if you want to see another uh, upload like this, like I say, just let me know and I'll see if I can roll them out every evening if you want them every evening. So thanks for logging on. I really appreciate it. I really hope this is finding you all safe and well. 
I'm going to go and uh, finish some editing now. And what I will do, regardless of whether we, you want a live stream like this tomorrow or not, I will upload tomorrow the next video in the um, Buyer's Guide Ground Bait series. And that's the one from covering the, the Van der Nye mixes from here in the tackle room where I'm going to be doing some tank tests for you. So I'll upload that onto this channel tomorrow. All right. So thanks for watching. Really appreciate you logging on. Please stay safe and well. And I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow.